Hey guys. What? <laughs> oh, fix the hole. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back. Last time we looked at the beginnings of modules and we implemented our own version of date keeping. This time I'm going to expand on that idea and create event handling. This will enable us to create things like festivals or simply make an NPC do day-to-day -day tasks. Today's episode might be a little bit boring, but it's important. It's the foundations of everything else I want to show you guys. So today, we're going to repurpose the chosen one. He is no longer going to be the master of Kung Fu, but he's going to be our event manager. He's going to make sure everyone does what they need to do at the time they need to do it. We're going to start off talking about the structure of an event. The way I've planned it, our event will contain five different variables. It's going to contain the faction it belongs to, what time it starts, when it finishes, the condition, and the action. To implement one of these events is pretty straightforward. For example, if we wanted to create a dance event, I would type var dance event equals open curly bracket and curly bracket. Inside this, we can put a faction, a start time, an end time, a condition, and an action. Out of these, the condition and the action are the only required ones. The faction start and end are all optional. And it looks like it's raining again. Don't worry, Jim Hickey will help us. Get out, Jim. <laughs> For this dance event, we only want a certain number of NPCs to actually dance. And so we're going to restrict it to faction number 5, which is our dance party faction. Every night we want them to start dancing around 8 o'clock, and so that is around 20,000. We want them to dance for a solid hour, so we'll end it at 21,000. The condition for them to dance is going to be that they'll only dance when it's not raining. And so we can implement the simple function to check for that. All we need to do is say return world dot is raining. The way this condition function works is it can either return true, false, or an event. If it returns true, it means that the current event can be run. If it returns false, it means that the event cannot be run. If it returns an event, it means that that event needs to be run before they can run this event. So in this case, this function is only going to return true or false. It's going to return true if it is raining, and false if it's not raining. Just thinking now, I've actually implemented this backwards. So these people are only going to dance if it's raining. To change this, you can just type equals false. And that way, it will always be the opposite. Finally, I need to implement the action. And so the action is also a function, but it takes a variable, which is your NPC. Now thinking of it, the condition actually takes a variable too. I can also check for specific NPC traits. So in this action we want to check to see if it's been run before. And so the way we're going to do that is to check if NPC dot has temp data is dancing. So that way we know if it hasn't been run before we can tell the NPC to dance. And so we can do that by telling the NPC to dance by setting their animation. Set animation and I think the dancing animation is three. It's five. It's five apparently. And then we want to check to see if they should stop dancing. And so we can just check if this dot end is less than or big, bigger than world dot get time. And we should probably just do it with a modular of 24,000 just to be safe. And this we want to set as animation back to default. So we use npc.setAnimation0 and we want to remove the temp data. So we do npc.remove temp data is dancing. Now I just realized I implemented this backwards again. For the is dancing, we want to run this line if he isn't already dancing. And so we also need to set temp data is dancing true. That way we know the NPC is actually dancing when they're meant to be. Now you may realize that this looks very very ugly. You can't really tell where code starts and code ends. 
I'm going to admit it, I don't actually do most of my code in this code editor here. I prefer to do it in Notepad++ and then I copy and paste stuff in. But for tutorials, sadly it's easier to show you by typing it live in the Minecraft client. So if you're ever actually really confused about what I'm typing here and you can't tell where stuff stops and starts, check out the links below and it'll link to my GitHub page where everything's formatted a lot nicer than this. Next, I'm going to implement an idle event. I just I just did a good take. <laughs> Next, I'm going to implement an idle event. This is going to be called when they're not doing anything else. This is just so the program doesn't crash if it can't find an event to use. So for this, it doesn't need a declare a faction, a start, or an end time. So I'm just going to leave those out. So the condition is just going to be a function that always returns true. Because it's always going to be able to run. And the action is going to be a function that just does nothing. These events that I've implemented are what I call global events. They can be called by any NPC. You can also create specific events for each individual NPC that are exclusive for it. This is good for when you want them and just them to do something. I'd eventually intended these actions to return either true or false. If these actions return true, I wanted that to imply that this action can be overridden. So for example, this dance event, dancing's important, so I didn't want anyone to replace the dancing with whatever event they wanted to do. So I'd return false. But the idle event, you know, I want to be able to replace the idle event with anything else, so I'm going to return true. Another way of thinking of this is that I'm returning whether or not the function has completed yet. So now we're going to implement the actual event module. This gets a little bit complicated in here, but it's all right. The main function in this event module is just going to check what the next event is going to be for the current NPC. And so I'm going to call it get next event. And it's going to be a function that takes an NPC in this get next event function. We're going to also want to test if an event is eligible for a certain NPC or vice versa. And so the way we do this is we create a function that takes an NPC and an event. And then inside this function, we're going to want to check against time so we can pull that from the world.getTime. There are three things we want to compare against. First, we want to see if there's a start time for the event. If there isn't one declared, we just assume it's for, it can start whenever. If there is one declared, we want to check that it's the right time to start. If the start time isn't now, and the start time hasn't arrived yet, then we want to return false, saying that it isn't eligible to run. The next thing we want to check is the end time. Similarly, we're going to check to see if there's one set, and if there is one set, we want to make sure that it hasn't happened already. Because if either have, we want to turn false. Finally, we're going to check to see if there's a certain faction that's going to be performing this. And so we check to see that there's a faction set, and that the faction is the same as the NPC's faction. And I just realized you can't see what I'm typing. Let's scroll down for you. Then if everything works out, we're going to return event.condition npc. And so therefore it will return true if the event can run, false if the event can't run, or another event if it needs to run something else first. Now that we can check if an event is eligible, we should go through and find which event this npc should do. So first, I'm going to check against the global events. This is actually important in the order in which you check. It's important because the first one that it finds, it's going to do. And so we're going to check to see if there are global events declared. Now we haven't actually declared them yet, but we will. I can't forget to do that or else this won't work. If there are global events declared, we're going to pull them 
from world.getTempData global events. Now with these events we're going to loop through them and check for each one. if it's eligible. Now if event equals true, we're going to want to perform the event. So we do that by returning global events i else if event equals false scroll down so you can see it we're going to continue and finally if it doesn't equal either of those we'll check that it doesn't equal null we can assume that it's returned an event that we need to run so it will return the event that we need to run. This code is starting to get very messy. Here you go, I quickly reformatted it a little bit so you can see indenting. It makes it way easier to edit this way. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the MPC has any of its own events that it should be performing. So we can do that by checking first to see if the MPC has its own events declared, which will be declared under MPC events. And if it does, we want to do them. So essentially we want to do the exact same thing that we did earlier. So I've gone ahead and added this. It was essentially just a copy and paste job from the global events, but I replaced everything with MPC events. And instead of pulling it from the temp data of world, I pulled it from the temp data of MPC. Pretty straightforward, makes sense. Now the final solution is if it's not going to return anything else, it's common practice to just return null. And so that way, whoever's calling this function knows that something's happened that shouldn't have happened. Now at the very bottom here, I'm going to add all the global events to the temp data. This just makes it so it can be accessed from other places. So I'm going to create the global events, and it's going to be an array of all the events we've declared. But so far we've only declared two events, and that is the dance event, and the idle event. Now again I repeat the order of these do matter. Whatever is eligible first is going to be called. So you definitely don't want to put idle event first because it's always eligible. If you put idle event first it's never going to compare against the bottom events. So you always want idle event at the very bottom. Now I want to add these events into the temp data. So to do that I just do world.set temp data global events global events and also I want to add the event module into the temp data so it can be accessed from everywhere else and then we have it this is the whole event module now let's see how to implement it in an MPC. Just a quick afterthought, I'm actually going to implement another method in the event module. And so I'm going to call that do event. This just means that I'll still have the ability to manually do it per MPC, but for, instead of having to copy and paste the same code over each MPC, they can just call this function and do it themselves. My program. What'd you do, Peter? My game just crashed. Oh. <laughs> now, every time it's going to do an event, it's going to check to see if the NPC is already doing an event. And to check that, you use npc.hasTempData current event. Now if it does have an event, it's going to pull the event out of the temp data and it's going to perform the action. 
and it's going to store the result in a variable completed. By default I'm going to want it to be true just so that if they forget to declare it, it can be overridden. And so we're going to say completed equals event dot what did I call the function again? Action. Action and action takes an NPC. And so now we can check if completed, which will return true if the NPC has no current event, we're going to search for a new event. And so on here, we're going to use event equals this dot get next event NPC. And so that will return the next event. If event doesn't equal null, then we're going to send mc .set temp data current event equals event and it's that simple now you can see some of you keen viewers may have spotted the error I typed event.start and then action.start so I can just it's an easy fix though I replace action with event so here we have Mullis he's going to be our first dancer we can save our event module equals world dot get temp data event module and then we can simply say event module dot do event and again I just realized that do event probably didn't need to take an event as an argument so I will remove this and if I ever need it I'll change the actual function later on so here's a problem if he's loaded event already and you change it the event is going to be still saved in his memory so you're going to need to wipe that the way I like to do that is to just in the init function use mpc dot remove temp data current event that means all you need to do to reset him is to right click on him with a scripter I made an error when checking against factions I had if event dot faction doesn't equal null and event dot faction equals that same faction as the NPC then returned false when really it should have been if it doesn't equals that was my bad it was a little thing some of you probably noticed that and I'm sorry it took me so long to work out another problem that I have is I told him to never give up the fact that he should dance which I believe is true but for this case we don't want him to do that the way we're going to fix this is just by saying here that if it's ended he should return true otherwise he's going to return false now that we hope we've got him working let's put the same code in each of these other guys now let's see if this works Malice why you do this he likes to be different how'd that thinking turn out for you malice I finish it up you can see that these guys won't dance if it's raining but as soon as the rain stops these guys love to party this person on the end here you can see I've implemented their own dance style I've done this using the NPC events and so I created a custom dance event here edit it to the NPC events and so they'll automatically load this one instead pretty groovy recording this took way longer than expected moral of the story is plan what you're gonna do before you record it <laughs> it did not end up well this time oh well I hope I fed you enough information to keep you going you just stood right in front of the camera what? <laughs> I hope I fed you enough information to keep you going. Feel free to ask questions. Next time we're going to have a look at implementing some more complicated stuff by integrating Java functions. Should be interesting. I'm going to set you guys a challenge. The challenge is to set these guys up so they will all go to the same location before partying. 
Now, I'm going to link the Java docs in the description because this will help you. It tells you how to set them to move and functions of the like. This is where I get most of my information from, so I'm sure it would help you. Anyway, that's all. See you next time.